All right, uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, today I wanted to do a video, uh, kind of a follow-up, a little more organized to my um, hobby update. I started talking about this, about painting, and just some of my thoughts on uh, painting for um, volume and trying to build armies. I think, especially for historicals, this is the most kind of um, intimidating aspect of it, um, especially if you're doing a bigger battle uh, stuff in 28 millimeters. So, you know, if you're doing Warlord Black Powder or if you're doing, I'm trying to think of some of the other, um, games in 28 millimeter, um, you know, Field of Glory, potentially, um, what else? Uh, Hail Caesar. I mean, that's a Warlord title. Uh, oh, Sword Point for doing Ancients and Medievals. Um, even Pikeman's Lament or like Lion Rampant, um, cause you can play some pretty decently sized games for that. So, um, just want to talk about, you know, painting for volume, uh, cause I think there's a lot of channels on YouTube, especially with the more games workshop side of things, um, or the channels that mostly focus on that stuff that are pretty big channels and they have like really high production value, um, and they focus on doing, making like really nice, uh, what I would call like display miniatures. Um, but I don't really think that's helpful for a newcomer, especially if they want to do historical games. Um, and they need, they want to build an army in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I just want to talk about my thoughts on that because I think pretty much all this stuff I've painted over the course of this year, um, yeah, uh, so I've gotten a decent amount done. Now, a lot of that's because of uh, the sort of pandemic situation and uh, the lockdowns and all that. Um, but, I mean, I think I even with that, I, I uh, was still, uh, well, I actually wasn't able to do much hobbying for a period of time because of a medical, uh, unrelated to uh, that stuff, a different medical situation. So, but anyway, um, yeah, so I did this in this year and... I think the first thing I would just say for doing like a historical army project is to just go for it and try painting. Don't like watch a bunch of tutorials. Like if, if especially if it's like, um, you know, these pro painters, cause the reality is, is those people, especially if like YouTube is their, um, job or, you know, I mean, close enough in that regard they're going to be able to spend, you know, at, like all day doing that one figure that they show you more than likely. Um, or, you know, they're at the skill level where they can do that level of detail in, um, you know, like a really quick amount of time. Uh, and, you know, I, I would also say that generally historical figures just are more detailed in general than a, you know, games workshop, well, like a space Marine or even, um, well, I got some of my Eldar over here, um, or even like a Warhammer 40,000 Eldar. I mean, this is not, it's, you know, pretty simple armor, uh, like an armor suit. That's one color for the Dire Avengers. Um, and then even if something with a little more detail, like the Howling Banshees, um, you know, it's really not that many colors, uh, and the detail is sort of limited. Whereas compared to even these Warlord, um, 17th century musketeers, I mean, you've got all these belts, all of these, you know, the accoutrements, um, let's see if I can focus it, uh, but yeah, a lot of details, and then, um, you know, and then, okay, we'll just take a look at my Ottoman horse real quick, um, you know, I've seen people paint these Ottoman cavalry with really intricate barding, and the shield's done a lot more better, uh, done much better than I can, um, you know, so my point is, you know, th there's a lot more detail to these historical figures, and you can definitely go above and beyond, so it can be really intimidating, um, uh, I know it was for me initially, especially doing, um, let me see if I can move the camera, um, yeah, move the camera a little bit, uh, so especially doing, like, these, um, writer, um, and these, uh, oh, that guy's hammer fell off again, uh, and these Carassier. So I think the biggest thing, 
um, I would recommend to people trying to build a historical army is to just sit down. If you got something, a project you want to really want to do, um, a period you're interested in, um, get a unit and just try painting. And, you know, it might not turn out the best. Um, you know, my stuff was certainly really hard at first. Um, and, um, just, just try it and, you know, and, and it won't look that good. Uh, and the other thing is you can always repaint the figures or you can strip the paint if you want to and do them over again and later on. I don't really like doing that as much. Um, but you know, like a lot of these units, I do have to give them a coat of wash cause I didn't have those, uh, when I painted them originally. So, um, you know, th these, even these figures are sort of not fully complete. They just need to be touched up. But, uh, yeah, I think that would be my number one thing is to just go for it and try it out. And the other thing I would say too is, you know, you don't want to make every single figure, um, like a showpiece model, uh, especially because, um, so this is kind of a deeper topic, but, um, so with historicals in general, the way the rules are written, especially if it's a big battle game, like anything Warlord puts out or, you know, others that are out there, um, that I don't you know, know about, or, you know, I can't recall at the moment. Um, the, uh, main thing is, you know, the, the individual figures usually aren't that important unless it's a game like, um, I'm trying to think, uh, like a skirmish game. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a big army. So generally the important thing is the unit itself. Um, and then, you know, maybe if there's, there are some, maybe there are some rules out there where individual weapon choices matter. Um, but this is where, uh, I would actually recommend, even though I don't, I've said on videos before, I don't like the Monopose Games Workshop figures, um, in historicals, I actually prefer having, um, Monopose uh, metal figures just to get them done, especially like these Janissaries with muskets. Um, you know, I don't need them to be multi-pose. It's not like, um, a, uh, Games Workshop kit where, uh, you know, like I want my Eldar or my Alpha Legion to look, you know, kind of be, to be able to pose them. You know, these guys I'm going to be putting together, as you can see, you know, we've got a big gun line, um, you know, I don't want them to be posed and all that. So, um, yeah, so that's where I would say for newcomers, go ahead and get the metal figures. Uh, occasionally they can be pricier, but it's really not that big of a deal um, because you can just, you know, you can, well, I mean, you usually don't want to glue them to the base at first, but you prime them, you start painting them, and you go, and then once they're painted, you glue them onto the base, you get your base done and, you know, you, you don't have to spend, um, all that time, um, assembling because I will say, uh, so this is a plastic kit from Warlord. So this is the regular, um, infantry regiment, like we're doing English Civil War, 30 Years War. And then this is the, this, these guys are from the Imperialist regiment set. So it's, uh, they're plastic, but the hats and, and the, musket stands and some of the accessories are metal. Um, I, I actually do not, was not a fan of having to assemble these cause, because the bodies are kind of small. Um, and it was a little difficult getting all of the, especially the, these musket stands to get them into place. Um, so I would say, you know, go for the metal miniatures, especially if you're trying to build an army prod, if you're doing an army and you really want to build it up, quickly or, you know, re in, in, in a, you know, month, couple months, I would say is fast for a big army. Um, you know, to, to go for the metal figures. I think that was the biggest thing I learned over the course of this year, trying to do my pike and shot stuff is, you know, the plastics are usually a little bit cheaper. Um, and especially in the world where plastics are really nice, but, um, they can be really frustrating because the warlord, um, uh, musket, uh, musketeers are the arms and uh, yeah, the arms are like a separate piece and the body. And then you glue the hat on. 
Um, so, I mean, you know, if you want to customize the hats, that's, that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, but it, it's just, it's more time consuming. Um, and I know I sometimes get frustrated with doing assembly, um, cause I have, my fingers aren't kind of big, so it's, uh, hard for me to do those little details. Um, whereas, you know, even the Warlord Ottomans, cause they're metal, um, you know, prime them, get them painted up and get them on, get them based up. And it's, uh a little bit easier. So that's, that's what I would say in terms of that. Um, and you don't, and again, you know, you don't, if, if you're doing a big army game, like I said, you're really not going to be needing each individual figure to be, you know, kitted out a certain way. Um, you know, it's not really, and most of these games aren't competitive tournament games anyway. So it really, doesn't matter. And then, you know, if you want to do something a little more, um, you know, intricate, I think that's where, you know, doing a character, I mean, I didn't really, this guy isn't really that exceptional, but, you know, if you want to do something that's like really crazy and put a lot more effort into it, you know, I think that's where the command figures in these games can, you know, stand out and, you know, and I've seen a lot of people do like really nice little mini dioramas having, you know, like a commander and the, um, and, you know, like his staff or something. Um, so I think that's, if you want to do like a big, um, let's move this a little bit. Um, you know, if you want to do like a big uh, or a more detailed display, you know, that's where you can do it is with the commanders. Sorry about that. Just needed to take a drink. Um, now, the uh, I should mention the one thing about the plastics that's a little um it's definitely not all plastics because like um so these are the warlord i've shown these on the channel before painted um so these are the warlord like marlborean infantry um and these only come in like two pieces and then i think the other ones that were multi-part were um like this is a standard bearer so he was like in two pieces um, because the legs can also be used for an officer. Um, oh, it's, it's that. Um, the legs can also be used for the officer. So um, that's a little more customizable. But the line infantry from that particular plastic set are not, um, you know, not really uh, hard to put together. Um, so, you know, it's... You can't pose them, but it's also like a lot quicker because you just got to glue the heads on and you're good to go. Um, uh, and then another thing I think for newer, newer people doing big army projects, um, especially for doing, you know, anything pre-modern, um, which is kind of more the focus of this video, uh, is cavalry is actually, at least it is for me, it's quite time consuming. I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's just the horse and it's the kind of the odd angles um, with the way the riders are posed. Um, but I, it's just something I've noticed. It's it's a much more time consuming um, to paint, you know, some cavalry um, because just, you know, you've got all these straps, um, you know, and then especially on these. 30 years war, uh, 17th century era figures, you know, you've got the, all the accoutrements and different jacket styles. And I mean, I, I paint my, um, imperialists pretty uniform, uh, which, you know, they weren't necessarily always like that. Um, but you can, you know, really go above and beyond what I do and you know, paint them with a bunch of different clothing options. Um, I don't really do that, but that's a separate discussion. Uh, I talked about some of that in the 30 years war stream I did, uh, one time about the uniformity. Um, and, um, I think one mistake I made that I would tell people not to repeat is, um, I bought too much at once. I think it's a little bit better, you know, to buy a regiment, work on it, um, and then finish that and then move on to the next thing. I think sometimes that's hard though, because I know personally, uh, at least with my painting, you know, sometimes I get tired of working on a particular unit. I get something else. I finish that. And then after I've done that other thing, I'm like, okay, now I can come back and uh, finish this other 
thing. Um, and, um, and then another thing I think for newcomers to historicals with the army is to have a plan, you know, uh, a loose plan, you know, not, not really super detailed, but I think if you just say like with my Ottomans, I had a plan, um, a general plan. I, okay. I thought, and, and there, it's not a full army yet. Um, you know, there's still going to be more, uh, in the coming, you know, in the future that I want to expand on it. Cause, um, you know, it's not really like an army army, but anyway, um, you know, I had a plan. I wanted to represent an Ottoman army at the end of the 16th century. Um, so, and on campaign. So I knew I was going to have a lot of Janissaries, um, some cavalry, but not too much. Uh, and then irregulars, uh, which is, you know, I got to buy more of these guys in the future, uh, and some Tatars as auxiliaries. Um, and then, you know, I just happened to get the, uh, uh, the hand weapon Janissaries there in the back um, from the Warlord box set, but that's fine because they can be the the close the breaching Janissaries when they go to storm a fortress. But yeah, you know I had a little bit of a plan, um, and then the same thing with my Imperialists. You know I wanted to have um, you know represent a uh, Imperialist force. Um, I didn't really buy the appropriate models for doing the late 16th century, but, um, you know, it, it's at this point, it's fine for doing 30 years war or like, um, the, uh, siege of, uh, uh, well, siege of Candia was, uh, Venetians, but anyway, um, you know, I wanted to have represent sort of like a 16th, 17th century, um, army, and have, you know, the Tercios, the Pike Formations, um, have some German writer, and, you know, just sort of have a mix of everything that they would have had um, at that, in that period. Um, and uh, so nothing, nothing too complicated, but just it was an idea because, um, you know, if you just grab, bag, buy things, I think that gets frustrating and then you lose focus after a while. Um Whereas, you know, if you have, okay, I want to represent this nation in this particular period of time, you know, you have a lot more focus. And I think, too, that's uh, also true within the period you want to do, because it's one thing to say, um, you know, like I want to do, um, you know, uh, I want to do whatever army. Well, I'll just use World War II as an example. You know, okay, I want to do a... Um, 15 millimeter German World War II army. It's like, okay, well, that's a good start, but you know, you're going to get, you could get, um, frustrated because, you know, you got to pick, you know, you might want to narrow it down to something a little more manageable. Um, okay. I want to do a 15, I say 15 millimeter because it's, that's a little more appropriate. I think for World War II for doing a bigger size army. So like flames of war, something like that, or, um, the battle group rules I've reviewed on the channel okay, I want to do, you know, 15 millimeter Germans, um, during, um, you know, I don't know the, uh, you know, the, let's say 1939 invasion of Poland. Okay. You know, that's then, you know, okay, generally, okay. I got to get this certain type of infantry sculpt. I got to get this certain type of tank. Um, you know, cause if you want to do, let's say, I don't know, um, 1945 battle of Berlin, you know, it's going to be a totally different project. Um, and that's even true of these earlier periods, um, even though maybe the technology doesn't change as rapidly as World War II, um, you know, there is definitely more of an element. I've talked about that on the Ottoman videos, um, you know, 15th century Ottoman army, you know, it might have some of the same elements, but, you know, it's going to be totally different proportions from doing, um, I'm trying to think like, okay, Battle of Vienna in 1683, you know, it's going to be two really different looking armies, um, and you know, if you just say, well, I want to do this one big thing, um, I think you could get potentially, you could get a little frustrated if you're, especially if you're new to this hobby. Um, and I know sometimes it's kind of hard to find, um, advice for historical gaming. Uh, I think it's the online communities are definitely pretty, um, you know, active relatively speaking, but it is sometimes I think in 
local area, it's hard to get um, some guidance on this because it's just really not that popular, not as popular compared to, you know, Games Workshop or like the franchise um, historicals like um, Flames of War or Bolt Action. Um, nothing wrong with those. I like those games, but I'm just saying um, if you want to branch out, it can be kind of difficult. Um, so I think uh, 20 minutes, I'm going to start wrapping this up. I think just to summarize quickly, um, you know, just I'll just repeat, you know, the most important thing I think is to just sit down and try it. And, you know, if you make mistakes, that's part of it. You're going to learn. Um, and I think, you know, the probably my last point that I just made that is also important is just to have a general plan. Um, and you know, you don't necessarily have to do, uh, all the research up front. I think one of the fun things about doing historicals is, you know, you get into doing an army and then, you know, you have to, you have to start looking things up because, you know, you're painting and, oh, okay, well, what am I doing here? Um, you know, is this correct? Um, or, you know, you, you just think of things as you go along. So I think that's one of the fun aspects of doing historical, um, more gaming is you learn as you go, um, and working on it more, you know, leads to, you know, having to learn more and, you know, you learn a lot of good stuff. And fortunately, um, cause we have the internet, a lot of the information is a, a lot more easy to access than, you know, like, uh, maybe some of you, I don't know. Some of you guys that are older war gamers that are subscribed, you know, maybe if you want to comment on this, um, you know, just that I think it was probably harder to get some of this information, um, especially in these more, you know, obscure periods back in the day, because, you know, you have to go to a big library, like if you, you know, if you lived in a larger city or, you know, you have to find a, a book with a really low um, print run, potentially, that's a, kind of a specialty specialist um, book. So, um, you know, there's a lot more resource, a lot of crap on the internet, uh, and bad research, of course, but, um, there's also a lot of good. So, uh, yeah, I'll wrap this up. That was just some of my thoughts on painting big, uh, historical armies for newcomers. Um, and it's just what I learned over the course of this year. And, um, if you guys have any other advice, uh, in the comments, especially you guys that have been in the hobby longer, um, than I have, or maybe longer than I've even been alive, potentially, um, you know, please comment, uh, I always like hearing from everybody, and, um, yeah, so I'll talk to you all in the next video, and, um, I'm trying to think, might do another stream soon, just as a bit of, uh, channel, uh, news, might do another stream soon, uh, we'll see, uh, and, uh, yeah, I will, uh, talk to you in the next video.